Just Ask, Digital Accessibility and the Deaf Community. What does being deaf mean to you? Um, I was born profoundly deaf, so I've grown up deaf my entire life. And I'm a native Auslan user. So English to me is a second language. Uh, when I attended school, I, was, I went to a deaf school and I identified strongly as a deaf person. And language was a beautiful thing for me. It was a really important part of me. Language, culture, knowledge, and the deaf community is really quite astounding. It's quite unique. So I think I moved between two worlds, being the mainstream world and the deaf world. Um, where the deaf world, I've got language and identity where um, maybe that's not so confirmed for me in the mainstream world. It's a really interesting question because it's something that I'm routinely asked and I always consider it as um, being deaf is quite a unique part of my life and I wouldn't be me if I wasn't deaf. I've got a beautiful culture and language, and that gives me a really strong identity as a person. It does mean a lot to me, really, um, to be deaf. And I have a deaf family, and we have the same culture and the same language at home. Um, and I feel like it's a really unique experience compared to the mainstream community. It really, um, I stand out of the group most of the time, uh, and that's really, what it means for my life really is that I'll always be grateful and I, I actually love being deaf, regardless of the barriers, regardless of life. Um, I have exposure to life, to um, how things work and that really gives me an open mind and I really, it's really special to me. It's a very unique question. Uh, Being deaf to me means that I can't hear as a starting point, um, but it also means that I see the world differently. Because I'm deaf, I use sign language to communicate with other people, but sign language also links to my identity. Um, my unique culture and linked with the deaf community. So being deaf to me means that I need to interact with the world in a different way compared to what people would perceive as normal. Um, and often people will think that I can't do certain things, which is not true. There's just different ways that I do things. It's about perspective. Do you spend much time online or using computers? Every single day. I'm on it almost 24-7. Um, I would say every day because I work online. I work as a designer, so there's plenty of work to do online, researching, speaking to people online in, in situations like we are now over video call. There's plenty of references and um, I'm a really visual learner, so there's lots of strong things, uh, strong video um, inspiration that I get online. Fantastic. Yeah, I actually do spend a lot of time online most of the day uh, for work and for personal use. Um, yeah, plenty of online online work and yeah. What do you like? Yes, I do. Um, personally, I love technology. I work in uh, IT. We, I'm an office professional as well, which means that through the day, I'm spending a lot of the time at my computer, as well as nighttime. I do like technology, as I said, so I spend a lot of my nighttime on a computer as well. Um, I play games on, online as well. But yeah, I, I would say there's a definite uh, online presence here. Um, I try to exercise and get time away from the computer as well, get out and about when I can. What do you like to do online?
Oh, it really varies depending on the day. I have a strong social media presence, so Instagram, Facebook being the two main ones. Um, and I like to access my news online to see what's happening around the world, what's happening around Australia, what's happening everywhere. Um, Um, also, deaf topics like uh, advocacy, human rights, uh, and deaf events. I think uh, there's, there's different things that I would find online in terms of deaf events and access to different platforms and things that I always access online. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, a range of things. Uh, I'm, I do like to watch Netflix if I'm having some time off work or, um, you know, being at home, why not? Uh, when I have a bit of energy and I want to look into something, I always really enjoy looking at websites, uh, reading articles, looking at Instagram and Facebook, following people. Um, I follow many act activists or um, advocates and I look at their videos. Uh, I learn about what's current, what's important. So, for example, lots of people have been, uh, you know, putting up a lot of content. Um, Black Lives Matter was the most recent campaign that I was following. I spent, feel like I spent more time online because I was reading about a lot of the information that was happening and I didn't want to miss anything. Uh, this week's actually National Week of Deaf People. Um, so I've been watching what people have been posting and waiting for things to come up, anything related to deaf people, um, anything I should be sharing with people that follow me. Uh, and I think it's really important opportunity to support the community and support what people are making in their content. That would be most of the online activities that I do. Excellent, thanks. Hmm. Uh, reading a lot about technology, finding out what's happening in that space. Also reading about, uh, you know, what's happening around the world, global affairs, politics, um, discussions to see what's current. Um, and that would range on a lot of different topics, things like, you know, how food has changed over time, genetics, science. Um, I'm, I have quite an interest in that and I do uh, spend a lot of time on the computer reading and catching up with current information. How does being deaf affect your online experience? Online is not perfect. <laughs> so there's always barriers there. Um, access to technology, um, we know it's changing and evolving and improving all the time. We live in a world that really focuses on their digital input. I love to browse the news online, uh, watch short videos, um, usually about a minute or two long, short and sweet, but often when I go to watch those videos, they're not captioned. So I don't often understand what people are saying. Uh, there isn't a transcript available. Uh, so often I, I wanna know what's going on in those short clips, but I don't have access to them. documentaries or information, you know, short two-minute stories that they're capturing online. Uh, they're quite visual and they're beautiful, but it's really, really hard to capture what they're actually talking about or what the point of the video is, especially when there are no captions or there's no access to sign language. So it really depends on what the purpose is, but that's definitely a big barrier. Uh, so I feel like that there are some barriers online. Maybe compared to a couple of years ago, it's definitely improved. Um, but the barriers that I would often experience are when a person is just speaking on a video and there's no access to captioning or no access to a sign language uh, interpretation of it, I feel like I miss out. I always crave information, so I am often looking for things, but I feel like I miss a lot of things because I can't access videos. There are plenty of people that you know, won't put the text summary at the bottom of the video. Um, specifically on like Instagram stories, people will just talk at the video. Um, and I will miss out on a lot of information and resources that way. 
those are probably the biggest barriers and frustrations that I have. Um, mostly for people who are, um, when it's not work related or uh, it's an organisational government, it, this is more about personal experiences. That's where I get the barriers. Um, I don't have access to those and that can be quite frustrating. Uh, before last year, the biggest frustration um, was government announcements or you know, life-changing announcements. Sometimes we wouldn't have an Auslan interpreter. And that was actually really frustrating, specifically on social media, because uh, the younger generation weren't watching the news on TV. That's not how they access the news. Our schedules are really different compared to um, people would be, you know, people would normally get home from work and watch the news at six o'clock at night to catch up on everything. But as a young person, that's not what I do. I rely on social media to access information. So that means that I felt a bit conflicted because I feel like I should be accessing social media and not relying on television, which is a fixated um, device. But now with coronavirus and the recent bushfires in summer, um, you know, it's been really, really unfortunate events, but it has allowed for more advocacy for the government to realise that providing Auslan interpreters is actually really important. I'm so appreciative of the Victorian government and Dan Andrews. He has an interpreter every day. There hasn't been a day where there hasn't been an interpreter standing next to him. And that's been really fantastic. It doesn't only impact me as a person, but it also impacts me at, at work. I need to be able to share information with the community. So I need first-hand information. And I need that online, not on TV. <laughs> I guess for work, if we're talking about work, uh, I'm in an office environment and I see people face to face. There's lots of discussions um, and I have access to interpreters like I do now. And that usually works well. Uh, and then COVID happened, as we all know, and we started working from home. Meetings are now all virtual. And I guess that's complex and there's a, their own problems there um, using sign language or Auslan is a 3D language. It's not this 2D. We use our whole space. Um, our body is receptive to not only the language that's being produced, but uh, body language, which elicits tone and expression. If I was to use a sign angry as an example, I could say I'm angry with this facial expression, or I could use a double-handed movement and add some facial expression. It changes the intent of the sign. So it adds tone. So there's a lot of um, 3D space used. And when you're working from home, you've got back-to-back -back meetings. In my work as an office professional, the screen is 2D. I still can understand the language and the content that's been given to me, but I feel like it's an additional processing time because I'm looking at a 3D language in a 2D landscape. So, uh, well, we also have uh, screen fatigue as well. So, you know, hearing people or people that can hear can throw in the headphones and join into a meeting. They don't have to watch. They could be doing other things around the computer and listening to the meeting. They don't have to have eyes on the screen the entire time. So that, and, you know, relax their eyes and come back to the screen when required. But when you've got eyes on the screen, I need to. I, that's how I access information. And as the day gets on, definitely screen fatigue kicks in. I'm always happy when I can turn off the video, like if there's one person presenting and I can leave my camera off, which means I can go around and do whatever I need to do. Um, and I feel like uh, Microsoft Teams, you know, or some online platforms need a bit of work. If it's two or three people in Microsoft Teams, definitely, you know, it can handle that. But if we're looking at, you know, 10 plus people, the configuration is not good. It's not fixed. You can't pin people uh, to one video um, or pin everybody. So Microsoft Teams, you know, still has a little way to go. Zoom has been my preferable online platform. Uh, and for work, we use Zoom. 
But if we have a meeting with an outside organisation, they use MS Teams. I'm always a bit or a bit worried about trying to move to another platform, particularly when there's a lot of participants. Hmm. So I guess I've talked about my work life, but at home, I do like to watch YouTube. I watch a fair few videos online. And recently, um, Uh, recently, YouTube have allowed community uh, captioning to happen, which means people can, um, someone from the community can do captioning for the videos. YouTube have decided to disable the community captioning or community uploads of captioning recently, and they have you have to use the YouTube auto captions, which isn't a precise technology just yet. Uh, when you're looking at social platforms like Facebook, um, Facebook has access to captions and I think because also people that can hear, if they're sitting on the train watching a video, they don't want the sound blaring from their, uh, from their phone and maybe they don't have earphones with them. So they've got captioning available on a lot of those platforms. But recently it's just started where they only do a minute or a minute 30. Um, but once you open it, it's enough to get you engaged, but once you open it, there's no captioning, which really is really frustrating. And deaf people get really excited, oh, this video has captioning, and then once you open it, there's no captioning. So those are a few things I'm thinking, you know, there's some positives in there, some negatives about my online experience as a deaf person. What are the top three things that would improve your online experience? Definitely, number one would be captioning on everything. Secondly, people post uh, a lot of things in you know long scripted English, um, something short, snappy that I could access quickly because English is a second language for me. And thirdly, it would be great to showcase some or have some exposure of Auslan interpreters in videos or transcripts just to make it more accessible. So, you know, there would be nice to have a choice even of do I want to watch it captioned or do I want to watch it interpreted? Brilliant. A better auto captioning would be the first. It's not my number one preference uh, for people to use auto-generated captioning, but it's the easy way out. And I would like to see people work hard to improve that. And I understand that some people don't have time or uh, they don't have skill to be able to do captioning. The last alternative should be auto-generated captioning, but the quality is not there. The technology is, is a bit shit, to be honest. It's awful. Um, they often will incorrectly um, show the words, and I don't feel like I've got equal access. I feel almost it's a waste. So I'd like to see that technology improved. That would be really good. Uh, secondly, more awareness through social media. Because we look at what deaf people need and they actually gain a lot from the mainstream community. So for example, captioning um, has become has become a bit of a culture on social media for people not to always have the audio on. They'll always they'll pop the audio on if they need to, and that's in the mainstream community. So I think some more awareness around that area, and I think to see that that actually deaf people will gain a lot from having access to that sort of information. And the third, I'm just trying to think, what, what was it? Um, I can't, I, I can't think of a third right now. That's okay. Hmm. For me, it would be automatic captioning. A lot of people may don't, may not like it, but I believe that. Um, we can prove to 
auto, really good quality auto-generated captions. At the moment the technology still needs some work and there are some mistakes, but often from those mistakes I can work out the context, um, which is it's good enough for me to be able to cover what I need to cover. Um, and if that if that happens more and more, um, on lots of different platforms, that would be amazing. That would be really good. And I feel like online platforms also just need a bit of work. Um, the user needs more control about how we can configure videos, how we can um, yeah set it up so we can concentrate the way we need to. I would say they're my top two. I can't think of a third right now. What would you like other people to know about being deaf? In mainstream life, um, we're all human. We, we, we all want to work, we all want to achieve, we all have goals. The only difference between you and I is I can't hear. I feel like when I when I see people in the community, uh, a lot of people panic. There's no attempt to really adjust and try to communicate. Accessibility is really important, and awareness of um, you know our language, our culture. Um, we often find that people are really taken aback when I say, "Oh, I'm deaf. Could we try an alternative way of communication?" Instead of just really understanding of who I am and what I'm about. I also wanted to add that it would be good to keep in mind that there are barriers to communication, but you know, offering an alternative way to communicate would be a really nice thing to do. That deaf people, we're all human, we're the same. We want the same thing. Uh, you know, people want access. So deaf people also want access to lots of different things. It's not only, we're the same. I feel like it's really simple. Um, it's really hard to explain because I don't know what's different. <laughs> I was born deaf uh, and so I've never had experience of being a hearing person. But I would like the mainstream community to know that we're all human, we're the same, we're no different. We just access information differently. We have different ways of living. But I think it's really important to know that deaf people haven't had access to things. So when we've had access, like captions were added, uh, Auslan interpreters were provided, we need time to get used to that because that's access that we feel like we often have to find an alternative way and use that captioning or interpreters as a last resort. But And I feel like the people that are creating content online or, and that want to provide access and want to make sure that you know performances or whatever they are, are creating is accessible and that they get a following from the deaf community it doesn't mean that they should be providing access regardless. They should be getting us time to get to know what content they're providing us in order to um, to start following them, to start gaining information, to start accessing it. Don't start stop creating access if we're not following. Hmm. really that we're the same. We're, we're all people. To really be open-minded, uh, to learn sign language, to not be afraid, to to use, you know, use a, us as a relationship to, to see what it is like. And I think once you get to know us, you'll find that we're exactly the same. <laughs> 